Um, first off, uh, Mr. Tagliano, thank you for your time. Uh, uh, congratulations on the movie, a really awesome, interesting. To me, it's a really mystery movie, more than a thriller, anything. So I think my first question has to, has to come. I know the story is from James C. Well, how much of the story uh, that we saw in the movie was yours, or how much was you just being faithful to what he wrote? Uh, hi, Ravi. Nice to see you, and thanks for having me. Um, I love your interviews, man. I watched a bunch of them, so man, I, mad, I admire your enthusiasm for movies. So I appreciate that. We all need that. Uh, the The story came from me. I it's based on the last movie we did together called Good Day for It, which had a similar uh, plot, similar location. In fact, we shot in some of the same places. So. That movie, Good Day For, was about a, a man that people thought was was a bad man who really wasn't, but had done one bad thing and had to pay for it. And I always had the idea of what would have happened if that guy was actually a bad man and comes to this place, doesn't know who's after him or not, and starts to turn good. So that was the genesis of this version of it, The Virtuoso. And I called James and I said, look, we did pretty good on good day for it. So that was the plot. And then James is good at breaking down the three act structure and, you know, kind of working in those elements. And so then when he was finished, uh, I took back over as the director, you know, doing like my polish and, um, and that's how we worked in the past. And, um, you know, it's turned out pretty well. So we created, you know, I created the idea. So it started from us and then, so I knew I was going to enjoy it. And I knew I was going to like it uh, eventually when I got you know, finished with it. Um, this, uh, this type of story is, is your forte. I think that basically you're the, the expert on this, on this type of uh, this style. What, what is it that virtuoso that stood out from the rest of your projects? I mean, I, you're correct. I, if you look at my stuff, uh, as I've said, uh, Two of the movies were play were actual plays that we adapted, and then I want to produce, want to produce and direct it. And then even uh, Wicked Blood with Sean Bean and Abigail Breslin was a very dark kind of thriller too. That was a pretty nice movie that um, Mark Young directed. And um, I I'm just drawn to high intensity situations, right? If you're going to create drama. It, and it's in a movie, not a series or not a long form. You need to get to it. So all the stakes need to be at the highest level, right? So I like the putting characters in the situation where they have to go to a, the high limit. And so it starts with character driven. And then you you were correct. And it's not really, you know, we're kind of marketing it as an action thriller, but really it's a it's an aura mystery, right? And um and it's all of those, but there is action, there are thrills, there is suspense. But um, the thing I always say to people, which seems to get them wrong, so I'm going to test you because I know you you are a student of this. But I saw it as a love story, really, uh, and that was the difference, right? That's the way I approached it, and that's the way the actors did it, right? Because the the virtuoso loves the mentor, the mentor loves the virtuoso. The waitress will, you know, secretly loves the mentor because she wants to be the virtuoso. So they all got that, believe, you know, believe it or not. It sounds simplistic, but it's not. And that's what separates that from a standard kind of assassin killer movie, which I'm, I'm not interested in. How were you able to maintain, you know, a cohesive mystery? Because I think to me, I, that's why I say to me it's a mystery movie, because that's why kept me in the edge of my seat. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out, I'm, I'm right there with the virtuoso, I'm doing the investigation with him. So how how were you able to keep that whole mystery uh, to make sure that, you know, once it ends, how it ends, obviously I'm not, not gonna spoil it, but you know, it just, you, you get that reaction of, oh, wow. Uh, well, I hope I got that reaction of, oh, wow, it seems to be working, but you know, it was hard, it was hard because, it's come up a few times where in you know today's world of speed and technology, people seem to think that they need to get the information immediately, right? And that, and sometimes that's a detriment to especially to movies like this. But when people actually can can sit down uninterrupted for an hour and forty five minutes and watch this, they remember that they want to go on the ride, right? They 
They want to go on that full ride. And then an extra 40 seconds at the farmhouse when the, the virtuoso and the deputy are stalking each other becomes really tense, right? Mm -hmm. And nervous. And you're not sure what's going to happen. So to me, we just kept working on in the script stage mostly with, you know, with the index cards and with comments from people and and looking at the at the through line going there's too much you know we're cutting away too much here back to the mentor we don't need to do that now we need to bring the deputy in to misdirect our audience and get them focused on is he part of it or is he just law enforcement because that's another wrench that the virtuoso has to figure out which slows him down as opposed to, oh, I'll just kill that guy. He's just in my way. He can't, you know, he, that's not his kind of forte, right? He's very meticulous and he's been given a job and that's all he's interested in, right? So he's not a psychopath, you know? And so that was the key. And that's the way Anson, you know, wanted to play that too. I mean, he said in, in one respect, uh, virginal, which you, you will get when you get to the end of the movie, but also so when he makes that mistake, that seed of guilt starts to seep in, in the first act and starts to turn him human, which becomes his fatal flaw. So it was hard, but we, you know, we just kept working it and then changed a little bit in the editing too, as you, you know. You, you got that reaction from me. I mean, I, 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 I kind of, I, I'm, I'm, I am a guy that likes just to be caught up into the story and, and I'm into this whole trying to figure out what's, so we know who was doing something or what's going on. So I, I got that, you got that reaction from me that I gotta congratulate you on that. Um, I was talking about the casting. I think the casting is really good. I think Anson just, you know, he just blew it up into other parts, you know, as ever to us, I think he he has the look, the feel, the swagger, the whole, the whole, the whole spectrum for, for the role. And obviously we have Mr. Hopkins and we have uh, Abby right there, which these are the three, Key characters in there that the whole story is revolving. Where, where, where did we go to the whole casting process, or we did we did have we, we just we had them all you know we singled them out uh, from the beginning. Sure, that's my my favorite thing. Uh, you know, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a a I'm an actor's director, but I grew up just watching movies. If people ask me how I got into it, my my dad let me watch movies just you know from when I was a child so i knew all the character actors too right and so when i when i get a script or when i create one i unfortunately as i'm also the producer so i have to limit myself uh in terms of how many people i can have in these movies but i always look for we could add another role here right because i i know this person or i want to work with that person so we started with anson because i had met him 10 years prior on a different project of mine that hasn't shot yet, but he was very impressive. I had seen him on, on Broadway and knew he could act. And, and I always go to theater trained actors, usually to me is, is a key, it makes my job a whole lot easier. But um, he had come in, he had remembered that meeting from all those years ago. He still likes that project, by the way. And, um, and I thought, you know, the guy's got the perfect look. He's you know, he's handsome as could be, but but he's also well-trained and all. And, uh, you know, he, he was on uh, Hell on Wheels at the time, still doing his Western. So I was like, he just needs a big screen. You know, he, he really, that's all. He'll, he'll command the big screen with that look and that jaw and everything else. And, but he's got the chops and that was the start. And then he was at UTA, United Talent Agency. And and they liked the script a lot and started sending me some suggestions. Abby, I loved from A Good Year, the Ridley Scott picture. And, um, and then I saw Bright Star, the Jane Campion movie. And right there, if you're an outside director that doesn't know enough, you go Ridley Scott, Jane Campion. You know, that woman has some chops, too, or, or she doesn't do those movies. Right. Mm -hmm. And then with Anthony, <laughs> I always tell this story because I love it. You know, the guy covering us, the agent covering us at UTA, I asked him, I said, do you have any of the old guys that might want to do something for a few days? There's one great scene and, you know, it's a real project. And he said, let me ask around. And he did. And then he said, there's, you know, word has it that um, Anthony Hopkins might be interested in independent stuff if, if he likes it. And I was like, 
well, that he wasn't even on my list <laughs> because I didn't think that was possible. So we took a shot, right? No, no other thing. And uh, two, it took two months, and sure enough, his agent called, said he liked it. And then the other, you know, then you have David Morris, Eddie Mars, and Richard Brake. I mean, still world class actors that have their own followings and they joined because you know we were you know at the time we were just going to shoot and Richard was in my previous movie Good Day for it so that all worked out great and uh, I hope you like them all because you know they're all important even though they don't have a lot of screen time right because the minute you walk in the diner you see Eddie Mars and you go I know that guy right from somewhere what's he all of a sudden showing up at the 42nd minute in this movie and and that's what what you need you know so thanks um, for picking up that cast it's it was important to me and i think they all did great sure. one final question um i, I want to see this i want to ask this like a final pitch for somebody that that has the the, the ever to also on their radar how what, what would you say that they need to see why would they need to see the movie what, what, that's a final pitch and why they would need to see this movie what, what's the reason that the people should give this movie a, a chance it's why to see specifically see this movie uh well i think you hit it on the on the nose it's it makes you think it's a it's a good story with multiple different plot twists all with good performances but you don't know what's going to happen and it's so rare today where pretty much people always have to know the answer they always have to get that information and you know and this one is just to take your time well but you know but we shot modern it, it looks I think, hope you like the look of it and the feel of it. So everything's modern about it, but with that old sensibility of let, let me be entertained and have to think. And that's why I think you should go see this movie. Thank you, Mrs. Aguilera. Thank you for your time. And again, congratulations on the movie. I really loved it. I really liked it a lot. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you.